How's everybody doing today? Alfred Flores, CEO, President of New Age Electric. Um, as promised, we are going to get into some code. We are going to be referencing Chicago Electrical Code 2018 edition uh, based off of the 2017 National Electrical Code. Um, specifically, we're going to talk about Article 517, Healthcare Facilities. Now, I am not going to give you a, a reading from the passage and, and bore you out of healthcare facilities. The only reason why I am doing healthcare particularly is because uh, the past three years, that's all I've been doing is, is um, healthcare, healthcare bids, and one of the one of the things I always wondered is hospital grade receptacles and this is going to be the topic of this discussion here what, what exactly is a hospital grade receptacle and what makes it different from a spec grade or an industrial grade or even a residential grade um, receptacle and and in the discussion we're going to talk about the the differences in the uh, receptacle mainly we're just going to go through the UL listings of this receptacle and I never knew this before is that it's not just a like an integrity and the construction of the receptacle there's actually uh, testing that's performed on this receptacle because of the life-saving equipment that's in these rooms that are required to have hospital grade receptacles and that's why they made this and in, in, um, maybe in the past 70 80 years that might have been a problem and and that's why they addressed this and then UL listings got really popular and and uh, uh, yeah so um, first we're, we're gonna die I'm gonna show you some things that this is all totally um, free go online you can look this up you don't need to buy the electrical code book if you don't have it I'm gonna show you how to get this all started so first let, let's jump into the Chicago electrical code 28 edition um, so if you guys aren't aware on the Chicago website reference this web address here your screen should look similar to this you can view any of these books for free online. It does not cost you anything. You can uh, anything that says full text read only, no problem. You can read this online. Um, a lot of stuff I, I I don't do. There's rehabilitation codes and minimum requirements for existing buildings. Um, this is the book we're going to be referencing: Chicago Electrical Code, 2018 edition. So if you click full text read only. You have a full version online from the NFPA. Um, a lot of people don't know this. I didn't know this until about two years ago where I happened to run across this. And I was telling myself, why isn't this free online to at least view? And then finally I found it. So um, I informed the, uh, you know like 10 people about this before and, and they weren't aware. So everybody's aware of how to get this. So... What we want to do is we want to reference uh, Article 517, Healthcare Facilities. Now on here you can hit Table of Contents and we want to go to 517, there we go, and there you go. Pretty good. You can look at the same time you want. I, I suggest everybody does. Uh, so we are going to jump into page 376 so let's see one second all right so this is 517.2 and just so you guys know I have the book in front of me because you can get easily lost <laughs> when referencing this book over and over um, you'll remember seeing something over and then the next day you can't find it it's just it's just your brain. I, 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 it's hard to find things over and over in this book. Um, I've taken the test numerous times and passed it, and um, I still find 
it's hard to go back and find specific things that I, I need to reference. But we need to go to 517.18. Unfortunately, you can only do this one page out of a time. And let's see, 517.18. And this is a little bit different than the book. Huh, okay. Now, I have one of the first books that came out. I ordered it right away, and I know they might have changed some of the layout, and they did. It is not exactly the same way. Wording-wise, it's the exact same way, but not how the layout is. So this is 517.19, so this is going to be on the next page. And here we go. Okay, so... As everybody should know, and, and if you're not aware, hospital-grade receptacles are technically required in the patient uh, bedrooms and critical uh, critical care spaces, um, such as uh, like operating rooms, sleeping rooms. With there, there's a equipment monitoring uh, the patients and whatnot, and one of the things you should know that there's a, a um, there's always patient bed recept location receptacles kind of tells you what this needs to be and it, and it says it here that all receptacles shall be listed as hospital grade and shall be so I, I shall be so identified now if you're in the um, a lot of the healthcare uh, electrical contracting I pulled up a extra heavy duty hospital grade receptacle and part of the reasons why I wanted to talk about this is in the specifications. Now mo most people might look at this and and they're like okay uh and pass in Seymour it's a uh, 120 volt backside wire number of three wires and it fits a number 14 to a number 10 okay good enough it's hospital grade. So there, there are other stuff and other factors in here that I, I think everybody should understand and, and, and realize that there was much more thought and just into this because of these UL listings. Um, now, like I said, I didn't know about this in the beginning. And I always would copy these ULs and, and they get really confusing um, because of the fact that this UL is not just one UL 498. When you reference this, it's actually referencing multiple UL listings, but they're not exactly under this. So we're we're gonna jump into that, and this is why I wanted to talk with uh, talk about hospital grade receptacles and, and the importance of using them in these specific patient and critical care spaces. Uh, so. UL-498, which was shown right here, it, it states that these requirements cover attachment plugs, receptacles, cord connectors, inlets, current taps provided with wiring terminals for flexible cord, and flat iron and appliance and plugs, all intended for connection to a branch circuit for use in accordance with the National Electrical Code ANSI-NFPA-70. Now, you keep reading these, and you're going to notice that there are other standards that are referencing. So it says in 1.3, so there's 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 1.3. 1 Here, here's the kicker on this one. This standard does not, a directly, does not directly apply to, but supplements the following standards. Not only does that, is it just that UL, it is all these other ULs that it's also kind of utilizing um, in their other standards. of It's just not UL-498. And the one specific one that jumped out, which I didn't even know this existed, was the uh, devices produced... I'm going to highlight this one. Devices produced integrally with flexible cord or cable covered by the standard for cord sets and power supply cords, UL817. Now, 
if you look up this code, I'm, I'm sorry, um, the UL listing, there are, um, there's basically standards that they do, uh, uh, testing standards that they do. And what I found is that the UL817 abrupt removal test. So in UL817, they do all these kinds of tests where uh, I, I believe they use like a, 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 like a 10 pound weight and they set it on the, the like the end of um, uh, one of the cords while it's plugged in. And it kind of like yanks it out and, and they kind of see if the blades are bent, if, it, if it's going to, you know, still keep the machine on. And I, I, I never knew this. I thought this was more of like, um, you know, the durability of the tension of the prongs that are inside that when you're removing this over and over, the tension is not really loosened over time. It still st stays nice and tight. So the cord is not going to lose. But it... it it's kind of that way, but it's kind of not, and it's it, it basically ensures that any kind of like life saving equipment or, or monitoring equipment, it's not going to get loose over time by just somebody wiggling it, or it's not going to just you know come out normally if somebody kind of brushes against it and it wiggles out. Um, it, it's uh, very very interesting up uh, these UL listings and. I always think it's really important for everybody to to kind of understand when you pull up your re uh, receptacles, and especially electricians. I, I I know the electrical contractors. You know, we 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 put the stuff in. We know it goes there, but why? Why does it go there? Um, it, it's uh, it's a it's a standard that's required. For patient bed locations that require the you know medical equipment and the critical care spaces and whatnot, um, hot, uh, technically, code, they're not required in the other spaces that are that that does not have this kind of equipment. Now, you might be saying there, no, 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 that's not right. We do this this way. It's th the code book is a set of standards at a minimum. If you want to go above and beyond the minimum, there's nothing wrong with that. You can have hospital grade receptacles in your whole entire facility because that's the way you want it. Uh, the engineer you hired for that, that's the way he likes it. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm just stating that it is not required by Chicago 2018 Electrical Code to be in every single space in the hospital. It, it's only stating that it needs to be in those certain rooms. Now, I the one things it, it really doesn't say, and I would I would say you you do need these regardless. I would put them in like um, where the nurse care stations are, um, because you got equipment that's you got nurse call systems and stuff like that, and you know you got people you got receptacles under the table, you got receptacles sitting uh, counter height. I would leave that stuff like that too because I it's not technically life safety, but it, it is monitoring the patients and if they need to do a pool court station in these rooms or a, a staff assist button I, I wouldn't want that communication broken anywhere because a cord got pulled out or or something like that I, I just I would I would keep it that way but in the offices uh, you know you don't need them in the offices I would go with something like a specification grade it's it's gonna be uh, a little less costly but it's it's going to serve the same purpose it's just it's not you don't need a life safety kind of this this whole hospital grade in every single space in the building and and not only this there's you got the healthcare facility code of uh, 5172 but there there's also other areas in the code book that state that you need tamper resistant in other areas too and in section uh, 408 
which talks about uh, switchboards and switch gears and panel boards. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm reading the wrong page. Uh, receptacle core connectors and attachments, and that's in 4016. So give me a second and I will pull this up. Uh, 406. And it is going to be on the last page. Um, here's a here's a biggie that I've noticed a lot, and I'm not pulling down any kind of engineers for this or whatnot, but this is not enforced as much as it should be. Tamper resistant receptacles, 15 and 20 amp. In these areas specified below, one through seven, um, you got houses in Chicago. They're, re they're requiring you to now have all of them in um, uh, tamper resistant. I mean, guest rooms, guest suites, hotels, motels, child care facilities. Um, like I said, this is a standard. And in Chicago, they're going to enforce it. And un un it's not unfortunately, but they do it and with the best intentions. is They might ask you to switch out every single receptacle uh, in in the area that might be accessible to anybody who can might plug something in or might try to jam one of the plug one of the prongs with a, a metal clip or a knife or a fork or whatever in case me um, yeah I agree you should be putting tamper receptive receptacles in here uh, preschools elementary uh, education facilities and here's the big one. This is where I find it the most because the stuff that I actually bid. Business offices, corridors, waiting rooms, and like in clinics, medical, and dental offices, and outpatient facilities. Uh, so this is really not enforced as much as it is because these, I, I just, I could tell you, I do hospitals all the time, healthcare facilities. This is not picked up offices sometimes i'll do an entire floor and it's they just say we want hospital grade receptacles everywhere and I, you know i'm not going to argue with them they put it together that's their um engineer drawings but um yeah this, it, it, it's a big miss so i'm just calling out the importance and and the facts that when everybody should be reading these hospital grade receptacles should should understand the basics of why we're putting this in it's just not the integrity of it there's there's all these tests and stuff the ul tests that that go with it and you know I, I'm, I'm glad that they put this stuff in because who knows the kind of accidents that happened you know 50 60 70 years ago and, and because plugs over 20 30 years because they didn't have enough money to update the electrical these plugs were wore out because they kept change they, you know they were putting in a new machine they took it out and the plugs got you know the prongs are now the tension's gone and these things were loosening over time and you lost that connectivity and the machine goes out well you know most of the healthcare facilities should be in some kind of emergency system but it's when the power goes out not for the power goes out on that electrical um branch circuit only so yeah, I, I wanted to share this and um, I'm going to be going into a lot more code um, while I'm still waiting on the uh, lighting controls. I'm going to start doing some of the smart controls too for the house. Um, I talked about a little bit about the Lutron, try to show what you can do from your phone, control your home while you're gone. And yeah, so this is Alfred Flores, CEO President of New Age Electric. Uh, any comments you guys want to talk about a little code? Uh, hit me up and yeah there's gonna be more into this so hope to see you guys soon thanks